Hey guys, welcome to my college football week 13 top five teams who should be on upset alert coming up for this weekend, the Thanksgiving Day weekend. Like I said, week 13 of the 2023 college football season. The top five teams, I'm not saying that these teams are going to lose. I'm just saying that they definitely need to not sleep on their opponent for this week coming up because they are on upset alert. They could potentially feasibly lose these games. Like I said, if you want to see what my predictions are, just look at my week 13 college football predictions video. But we're going to get things started looking at the number one team who should be on upset alert at 730 on ABC on Friday. We have Texas Tech sitting at six and five versus number seven, Texas Longhorns sitting at 10 and one. So the Texas Longhorns definitely need to be on upset alert for this game. Why? The main thing is, is a lot of people pick this game as a slip-up game because Texas Tech always plays the Texas Longhorns tough, and sometimes they beat the Texas Longhorns. This is also potentially the last time that we see these two teams play because Texas is off to the SEC after this year. So this is Texas Tech's final chance to get a shot in on Texas. Also, the Big 12 commissioner before the year started said that he hopes that Texas Tech smokes Texas as their final game in the Big 12. So C. Sarkeesian better not forget that, that he got called out by the commissioner that the whole conference will be rooting for Texas Tech to knock their own team out of playoff contention. That's also the main thing here. Texas must win out in order to get into the final four and make the playoffs. They do have potentially possibly the best win as of right now. They curb stomped Alabama in Tuscaloosa earlier this season. That's what's keeping them in front of Bama right now. They are number seven. They have that lone loss to Oklahoma. They have to beat Texas Tech, potentially play Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship, get their revenge on them to make up for their one loss. Looking at the details on this game, Texas is a 14-point favor here. That's a pretty big spread. The over-under is 52 and a half. Now, usually there would not be a lot of concern coming into this game because Texas was pretty hot first half. They were beating teams up, blowing them out. But pretty much since the Bama game, they've kind of cooled off on offense. Quinn Ewers did get hurt, but even when he was healthy, they were running up the score first half, getting outscored every single second half. So they'd be up 24-3, to and then they would win the game 27-25, something crazy like that. Completely get outscored, beat up second half. They would get wore out. They would get tired. Quinn Ewers, for some reason, couldn't throw the ball past 10 yards. They had a lot of issues. This team is one of the most, the top five talented rosters in the country. They should be able to move the ball second half on these Big 12 defenses. They should be tiring them out. They have one of the better offensive lines. They should be able to run the ball down people's throats. They have vertical weapons. They have a top first round pick, sorry, a first round draft selection at tight end. They have Worthy. They have Mitchell, so they have weapons to push the ball to, but Quinn Ewers hasn't been going vertical very often this season. Looking at the team stats here, Texas Tech, they average 28.6 points per game, Texas 33.1 points per game. That's good, but it's not top four worthy. Every other team, they're all pushing 40 points per game. So Texas, to compete with those teams, you're going to have to get your offensive numbers up. Looking at defense, Texas Tech gives up 24.3 points per game. Texas has a top 20 defense. They give up 18.2 points per game. They are without Brooks. He's hurt. He's out for the year. That's another loss, but they did get the running game going last weekend. But Quinn Ewers will have to step up, only having 2,500 yards so far, 16 touchdowns and four picks. Do not underestimate Texas Tech, like I said. They are better than their record. They almost beat Oregon at the beginning of the year. They have a very good pass game, and they also have Brooks at running back, closing in on 1,400 yards. So Texas Tech can throw it. They can run it. So that's my main team that should be on upset alert is Texas. Do not overlook the team you're playing right now, focusing on the playoffs. The next team that should be on upset alert is also Friday at 8.30 p.m. on Fox. Number 16, Oregon State at 8-3 versus number six, Oregon, sitting at 10-1. and one. So I have the Oregon Ducks on upset alert. I'm in no way saying that the Ducks are going to lose this game. If you want to see what my predictions are, look at my predictions video. I'm just saying Oregon cannot sleep on Oregon State. This is a really good team. They won 10 games last season. They almost beat Washington this past week in a rainy, horrible physical game. They almost beat Washington. 
Washington is Oregon's sole loss. They did beat them in a physical game earlier this year. So Oregon has to take them serious. This is also the last time, again, that these two teams are playing. So Oregon, they're off to the Big Ten after this year. Oregon State, they're off to nowhere because they have no home next season. You definitely know they want to beat their big brother team. They want to beat Oregon. This could be their last chance to. So Oregon, 13 and a half point favorites here over under 62 and a half. So Oregon's only loss is a very good loss to number four, Washington. That game was really close. The Ducks should have beat them. Oregon has been just curb stomping every single team that they've been playing since then. Why? Because they want to show that they're better than that loss. They want a rematch versus Washington in the Pac-12 championship. So they've been trying to do everything that they can to make up for that loss. With that in mind, playing Washington is on the horizon. They just have to get through this game. But do not get caught looking at Washington wanting to get revenge so bad that you overlook Oregon State, who almost beat Washington last weekend. Now, Oregon has a lot of things in their favor. Looking at the total team stats here, you have Oregon State averages 36.3 points per game. That's a top 20 defense. They can throw at DJU. They have a really good running back with Martinez. Oregon, they average 46.5 points per game. That's top five in the country. They can move the ball with Bo Nix. And on defense, both teams have good defenses. So Oregon State, they give up 20.6 points per game. That's also a top 20 defense. And Oregon, they give up 16.7 points per game. That's a top 10 defense. Oregon is probably the best rounded team in the country on paper. They haven't really played anyone so far this year. But like I said, on paper, statistically, top five offense, top 10 defense. Not very many teams can compare with that. Looking at the quarterback matchups here, DJU can throw. He can run. He's closing in on 2,500 yards, 20 touchdowns, six picks. Bo Nix is probably the Heisman front runner. If not him, it's Penix for Washington. But Bo Nix, he has 3,500 yards, 35 touchdowns, and only two picks. So crazy numbers. And he can also run the ball very well. Oregon, they have weapons. They have Franklin. They have Irving. They have Nix. So they definitely should be the favorite team. But like I said, don't get caught looking forward to Washington so much that you overlook Oregon State. The next team that should be on upset alert, we're now moving into our Saturday matchups at 7 p.m. on ESPN. The team is number five, Florida State. They are 11-0. They will be going to Gainesville playing five and six Florida Gators. Florida State, six and a half point favorites here. The over-under is 49 and a half. So people might be saying, Florida State's going to beat the crap out of Florida. That is very possible. But they the reason they should be on upset alert is because of the unknown here. Jordan Travis, great quarterback, one of the top 10 quarterbacks in college football. He broke his leg last weekend. He's out now for the season. His Florida State career is now over. So they have Ron Baker coming in at quarterback. So they have their backup playing. Although he played very well last weekend versus an FCS team that really doesn't count. That's FCS. Now you are playing your hated in-state, your, your biggest rival, the Florida Gators, in Florida. That's a lot of pressure. Florida State won last weekend, but they actually fell in the poll rankings, fell from four to five. The pressure on the quarterback is you have to win out and beat these teams so bad that the committee catapults us back into the top four. That's not on Jordan Travis's shoulders. That's now on the backup shoulders. And you have to do that versus your in-state rival, Florida Gators. For the Florida Gators, Billy Napier, he's on the hot seat right now. He's definitely fueling the flames. I don't think he'll be fired this year. If, it, if they have the same garbage record next year, then he'll probably get fired then. But as of right now, they're fighting to get a bowl game. They almost beat Missouri last weekend. Barely lost them. Last second field goal to end the game. So that lets you know that this team is still fighting on offense. They're moving the ball. They're scoring because they're fighting for a bowl game. They almost beat a top 10 team last weekend. Could they potentially beat a top 10 team in-state rival this weekend? You definitely better believe that they can. They also lost their starting quarterback, Graham Mertz, probably going to be starting Max Brown this weekend. That's the unknown. We don't know anything about this guy. We don't know how well he's going to play versus Florida State's defense. So it's a, it's a matchup of the unknowns. Whenever there's unknowns, Anything can happen as of right now. Now, looking at the total team stats here, Florida State obviously has the way better roster. So they average 40.1 points per game. 
but that's with Jordan Travis. But they still have Benson and Coleman, so they still have weapons there. But backup quarterback facing a, a, a aggressive defense, that's not good, but they have nothing to lose. Florida Gators, they average 29.6 points per game, but that's with Graham Mertz. On the defensive side, Florida State has a top 20 defense. They give up 16.9 points per game. Florida gives up 27.9 points per game. Like I said, I'm not saying that Florida State's going to lose this game. Obviously, they're the way better team. If they had Jordan Travis, this is still an in-state rivalry game. Anything can happen. But now he's out, and the Florida Gators have shown that they are still fighting because they want to get a bowl. They're hungry for the bowl. Florida State, though, they're hungry. They have a lot to prove. They have to beat teams in order to get back into that top four spot. That's why Florida State should also be on upset alert. The next team that should be on upset alert, 12 p.m. on Fox, number two, Ohio State at 11-0 versus number three, Michigan at 11-0. Michigan, three-point favorites here, over-under is 45 and a half. The team that should be on upset alert out of these two teams is the Michigan Wolverines. Even though they are number three and the Buckeyes are number two, Michigan is the favorite team. So they are expected to win by Vegas. Thus, if they lose, that is an upset, technically. Now, with this matchup, this is hard. It's just like the Florida State game. There's a bit of unknown here. Harbaugh will not be coaching this game. He will not be present. So they'll be going with Sharon Brown. He has shown the propensity to be really conservative on play calling. Versus, uh, what was that, Penn State, they ran the ball like 38 straight times. Did not throw a pass the whole second half. Yes, they won the game. But what the heck was that? You didn't throw at all? Uh, that's just kind of odd. And then last weekend... I think J.J. McCarthy had 148 passing yards versus Maryland, who doesn't have a good defense. He hasn't thrown a touchdown in three straight weeks. That's not good going into the Buckeyes game. Now, some people might say, well, that just shows because they played so bad the last three weeks that they are due to play well. Statistically, that is probably right. And I can definitely see that I can agree with that. I'm not saying that Michigan will lose, but they played so bad that, yes, they might be due now to get right, score, run the ball, throw the ball, do everything they can here. So they definitely could be due for that, but they could also be due to continue to not be able to throw the ball. When you look at this game, these are two teams, each of them playing. Whoever wins this game gets into the playoffs. That's what's at stake. They're not battling for top four. They're battling to get into the playoffs. Both teams have everything on the line. Ryan Day, Harbaugh's not there. Perhaps that lights a fire under Michigan. Perhaps they get a little lost second half without his leadership there, and they're too conservative running the ball when they should be pushing the ball down the field. When you look at Ohio State, they have one of the best, if not the second best, wide receiver core in the country next to Washington. They have weapons there. Kyle McCord not having a good year by any means whatsoever. Now, he's not having a bad stat year, but with his weapons, he's not doing very well. So that is in Michigan's favor. They do have a very run, they have a pretty good run game, though. Henderson has been playing well the last few weeks. For Michigan, this is the number one, number two defense. Michigan's number one, Buckeyes number two. So they're pretty evenly matched right there. Michigan has the better running backs, Donovan Edwards, Blake Corum. Both of them not having good stat years here. Now, Blake Corum has 20 touchdowns, but he's only averaging like 3.5 yards per carry. That's a big letdown from last year, but they do have the better running backs technically. They have the offensive line. That's one top offensive line last two years running, and they've been nominated this year. So they could potentially win again this year. But the Buckeyes have their head coach, and they have an offense clicking at the right time right now. Looking at the team stats here, the Buckeyes come in. They average 33.6 points per game, Michigan 38.3. And like I said, Buckeyes have number two defense giving up 9.3 yards per game. Michigan gives up 9.0 yards per game. So this game is almost as evenly matched as it could be. That's why Michigan should definitely be on upset alert for this weekend. Our final team of the five who should be on upset alert at 8 p.m. on the ACC Network. We have North Carolina at 8-3 versus NC State sitting at number 22, sitting at 8-3 also. UNC is two and a half point favorites here over under 55 and a half. So UNC just got kicked out of the top 25 this past week and NC State got welcomed into the top 25. This is an in-state rivalry matchup. There's a lot at stake here. Both teams battling to finish the year nine and three and it's an in-state rivalry. NC State, who is the ranked team, is actually the underdog this game. That's why they should be 
on upset alert. They're the ranked team playing the unranked team. It is in-state rivalry and UNC is favored. Now, I'm not saying that NC State will lose. They have a very good defense, but North Carolina should definitely not be overlooked. When you look at the total team stats here, UNC, they average 38.1 points per game. They can run it. They can throw it. NC State, 25.7 points per game. That's not very good. That's kind of average to below average. UNC's defense is not very good. They're below average. They give up 26 points per game, but NC State has a top 20 defense. They give up 20.2 points per game. So they can definitely rely on their defense to keep them in this game. But looking at the quarterback matchup that we're going to have for this weekend, Drake May, UNC's quarterback, he's a top five NFL pick. This could potentially be the last time that we see him play. Now, he might play the bowl game. Hopefully he does, but just in case he doesn't, he's closing in on 3,400 yards, 22 touchdowns, seven picks versus Armstrong, who's not very good. He has 1,300 yards, eight touchdowns, and six picks. And they have a quarterback by committee. They have the other quarterback who throws and runs as well. But looking at the matchups here, UNC, they have the better weapons. They have Drake May. They have Hampton at running back, closing in on 1,500 yards. They have Walker at wide receiver. That's why NC State should be on upset alert. If they're not able to score enough points, UNC is definitely capable to outscore them to beat them, and to take their place in the top 25 next weekend when the final poll comes out. So that's my breakdown of the top five teams who should be on upset alert for week three. Hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks.